Hello and welcome to Digital Jeepney. My name is Hazel and I'm here to show you how to use the inbuilt sequencer of the IVCS3. As in other synthesizers, the IVCS3 sequencer is a controller which varies the pitch and rhythm of our sound sources. In itself, it does not produce any sound unless you run it through the DK keyboard's internal VCO. As an example, I'm going to plug in the sine wave of oscillator 1 into our output channels 1 and 2. And to introduce the sequencer's control voltages to our sound source, I can either drop pins in input channels 1 and 2, or in the horizontal or vertical joystick slots like so. Note that the corresponding module to input channels 1 and 2 is this, and varying the settings on this module would affect the overall pitch of our sound source when you're plugging the sequencer into the DK keyboard and into input channels 1 and 2. To get all 12 notes in an octave, set this to 0.32 volts. Otherwise, this module has no effect when you're accessing the sequencer's control voltages through the joystick. If you want to get all 12 notes in an octave via the joystick, set the vertical and horizontal ranges to 0.32 volts. For further instruction on standard tuning, check out my IVCS3 tutorial number 3. Let's get rid of the joystick control for now and use input channel 1 to access our sequencer's control voltage. One thing you have to note is that when you use input channels 1 or 2, the control voltages pass through the keyboard all the time. Now let's go over to the back panel and check out the sequencer's parts. This right here is the switch that turns our sequencer on or off. And here are the steps which we can mute or enable by tapping on them. This dial here sets the tempo of our sequence. And this here is the randomized dial. Turning it up increases the sequencer's amount of deviation from the programmed pattern. For simplicity's sake, I'm going to use a 4-step pattern instead of the current 8 steps and turn this dial down to decrease the number of steps in my sequence. Note that you can go up to 32 steps if you wish. Now to input the notes in each step, tap on the bottom of the step to connect the step to this part of the sequencer. Now tap on the DK button to access the blue keyboard for programming the steps. Since step 1 is currently selected, any selected note on this blue keyboard will be played on step 1. Tapping on the record button automatically selects the next step on the sequencer after you've programmed the previous step. You can also program the velocity of each step by using the top to bottom velocity control of each key. Tapping on the very top of the key turns the key pale pink or purple. Now as you tap downward, the key darkens in color, signifying an increase in velocity, until you reach the maximum velocity represented by a completely red key. Switch to the DK keyboard's input channel to signal. Now on the matrix, connect input channel 1 directly to output channels 1 and 2. What we're currently hearing is a pre-programmed sequence without any velocity change. Let's bring up the blue keyboard again to input velocity variations. We can clearly hear the changes in velocity this time. So far I've only managed to make this feature work on the DK's internal Sawwave VCO. All other means of changing the velocity only result in a change in pitch and not in an actual change of amplitude. A more practical approach to using the sequencer is to run our signal through the envelope, which in turn can be triggered by the sequencer via the envelope gate switch. This would give us more control over the rhythm of a sequence. Here you can see that the gate closes and opens to the beat set by the sequencer. Now let's turn on the notes. Likewise, we can set different rhythms by tapping on the subdivision button and selecting other subdivisions. Here we see the direct relationship between the envelope, the tempo, and the subdivision panel in creating a sequence. 
What I love about the IVCS3 is that it is partially tameable, but for the most part, it is still quite unpredictable. And that unpredictability becomes very apparent when using the keyboard along with the sequencer. You might have to experiment between the IVCS3 keyboard and the new keyboard and the settings menu. Right now, I'm using the new keyboard. Let's go over to the envelope gate switch and flip that over to DK so that the envelope opens only each time we press the keyboard. With some patches, the sound gets cut off when the loop goes back to 1. To keep this from happening, you have to press down two keys at a time. By setting the envelope to produce a more staccato sound, we can somewhat apply the sequenced groove to our note. However, the sequenced pattern doesn't really get transposed by playing the DK keyboard. The notes from the DK keyboard only sort of fall between each step, depending on how you set your envelope. To transpose or change the pattern in the sequence, you'll have to access the blue keyboard and hold down these buttons. When using the joystick to introduce the sequencer's control voltage to our sound source, you can create an entirely new sequence by tapping on this button. Switching it off effectively kills the sequencer. Programming a new pattern in the sequence via joystick control does not erase the program pattern for channel 1. And unlike in channel 1, you can transpose an entire sequence by moving the joystick up or down. You may also pan steps by using this dial. First, turn on this option then tap below each step and pan accordingly. The IVCS3 sequencer can be used as a rhythm generator or as a pseudo arpeggiator. It can be used on tuned sources as well as untuned sources. So like I always say, go crazy with it.